amazing to be able to work on the Antonov 225. It's, I mean, it's probably one of the most legendary aircraft in the world. And uh, we've been able to bring it into the sim. And it's, as people were just saying about before, it's such a unique experience. So I'm going to start by going through the flight deck and just trying to give you an idea of scale. The scale of the plane is just unbelievable. So if I just start to pan backwards here, you can start to see the captain first officer's seating position. And that's obviously normally where we, we would end. But we've actually got the engineer's panel here, which has got a little bit of a kick out. This is um, this 90 degree panel is unique to the 225 as compared to the uh, Ruslan. We've got some engine instruments here and we also have a dedicated electrical engineer station. This really gives you an idea of the complexity of the aircraft where this was one person's job just to run the electrical system, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, pretty amazing. Uh, if I then pan across the other side, we've got the navigator station here and the radio operator. Often forgotten, as they say, the radio operator, <laughs> but he's got an important job. Uh, and if I just pan back to the rear of the aircraft, you start to see really the size of this flight deck. It's just so impressive when you see it like this. We've also been able to model this sort of rear passenger area. So we go back here and this is where the crew would rest. These are actually beds that pull down in flight. So this is where you can rest here and here and they're kind of uh, reminiscent of quite a lot of like cross benches, things like this. And what we're going to do now is I'm just going to head downstairs in the aircraft. So this section of the aircraft is the only part that's pressurized. So this door, why it looks pretty robust is because it's actually has to hold the pressure back in flight. But we can actually head down the ladder just down here and take a look at the massive cargo area. Now, one thing I tend to do when I'm in here that's pretty funny is I kind of end the camera here because it feels like this is your natural head height because it's so mm -hmm. big, but actually it's all the way <laughs> about here, <laughs> which is pretty amazing when you just see the scale of this aircraft. It's pretty it's unbelievable. Incredible. You know? uh, this floor here, you might see it's kind of got, like a, you saw it in the trailer really, really nicely illustrated. It's got a funny color. The first time I saw it, I was like, it doesn't look right. It looks kind of odd. And it's because this is solid titanium, which is pretty impressive that this whole floor can support up to a payload of 255,000 kilos, which is by far the heaviest load taken by any aircraft. It's almost a hundred tons more than the second, <laughs> second highest, which is, gives you an idea of where we're at in terms of, uh, in terms of weight. So I'm just going to quickly go on to the outside view here. This, I've made sure I've calibrated it again. This is kind of the head height for the aircraft. So this is what you would see if you walked up to the, the 225 during a, a walk around. And you see we've really, really tried to capture a fair bit of the detail here. You've got the, the pitot tubes, angle of attack, and the, uh, the Antonov livery on the side here. It's got the very unique uh, double bogey at the front. And I know quite a few people say, well, what, what is the point of that? It's got two reasons. Number, number one reason is to spread the weight of the plane because all the airports in the world aren't designed specifically for the amount of weight. So they have to spread it across. So that's why they put those here. And it allows the unique uh, kneeling function, which we'll take a look at shortly. If I just quickly move back here, you can see the three engines. So six engines in total. These are Modisic D18 engines, really powerful, 51,000 pounds of thrust each, which if you're trying to think of an equivalent, it's about the same as uh, the CF6 engine. So in the A310, it's like having six engines from the A310 plus a bit more, <laughs> which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the landing gear here, uh, you've got the very unique landing gear from the rear. It's, it's these rear three, which was really nicely illustrated in the trailer as well, they actually steer. So if you move the nose wheel to the right, they will steer to the left in the opposite sense. And this allows uh, in, you know, proper handling on the ground. And it was something during development. The first time I tried to taxi the plane, I thought, God, it's really hard to taxi. This doesn't seem right. And it's because in the flight model, we didn't have the rear wheel steering set up. And when you set that up in the flight model, it actually is, it's, it's not bad. It's actually pretty maneuverable, to be perfectly honest, uh, for its size, for its actually just pure, absolute scale of the airplane. Uh, I'm just going to go to the wingtip just to give you an idea of <laughs> how big this aircraft is. It's such a monster. It's amazing. So one thing we were able to, to keep in, in the aircraft is a, it's a tribute and also it's an important part of the aeroplane is the data plate. Now, the data plate comes on every single aircraft and every single Antonov aircraft as well. I'll just try and get a little bit closer. And you can see this shows all the information 
from the aircraft there and it uh, will be put on the new Maria, they've said, and it's survived. And we've replicated it here on the aircraft as well. Here we have um, the APU. You might notice I said APU, we have two. <laughs> everything on the Antonov is big. There's more of everything. It's got more batteries, more engines, more everything. So there's one either side and it's also at ground level, which is uh, unusual, but it makes sense because they're trying to keep the weight as, as far forward as, as possible. Uh, on the tail, this is very unique. Um, we have the double boom tail. So basically, uh, rather than having the single fin, uh, we've got it on the either side like this, and there's no fin in the middle. I'll move back around this side, and we'll shortly hop back into the cockpit because it's pretty much the same thing on this on this side. So let me just hop back in quickly, and quickly head back upstairs, which does take a while. <laughs> it takes a while to get to get everywhere. So I'm just popping my head back through here. The the cargo loading we're going to look at now. So I need to turn the power onto the aircraft. So here we've got the batteries. Like I say, there's more of everything in the in the Antonov. There's five batteries. So we're going to put them up into the automatic position, and this connects all five batteries up to the aircraft. Just turn on the transformers, and you can probably start to see why this is a someone's job. <laughs> it's it's pretty it's pretty complicated, and I'm going to start up the auxiliary power unit quickly now. So one thing that we've done to try and make this uh, a little bit easier to use for people is if you notice everything is that's tooltips, it's obviously going to be in its localized language and everything that it isn't like the enunciator lights, you can swap between Russian and English. So you can have it in the original or you can have it in English so you can actually see what's going on with the aircraft. So I'm just going to start that now and head back forward as well. While that's happening, uh, I will start to try and show something we have here, which is the payload section. So we have different payload options that you can load through here. And on the ground configuration tabs, we can pick different things to load. So we have fire trucks, and these are loads that normally the AM124, the 225 took. And if you load this in, it actually adds the real weight into the aircraft, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got helicopters, we've got a boiler. This is the heaviest load. This in itself is 183,000 kilos, and they carry quite a few of these and I'll start opening the main door now. I'll just hop quickly back onto the outside. Now for the cargo door, <laughs> if I had this in real time, it would take uh, about six minutes, which I think would probably be all the time we have. <laughs> so we have an option in the EFB that does it fast, which is this mode here. And we have one as well that does it in the real time. So if you want, you can do it either way, but at the moment, this is the fast mode. Uh, the sequence goes like this, the forward door comes up and you can actually, if you it's see here, it's kind of interesting. You see these little, we call them the ears. I don't know what they're actually called, but they kind of poke out to allow the door to swing all the way back like it does here. And then the next thing we're expecting to do is these little legs will come down and then the door will drop down. And we'll load the cargo in and I'd probably have been <laughs> talking for too long. I could talk about this aircraft for days, so you'll have to stop me. <laughs> I'm sure people would listen to you for days. To yeah, I can go on aircraft. about this plane. It's it's yeah. it's absolutely an it's such an interesting plane to mm -hmm. be involved with because there are these things that you know when you look at a Boeing or an Airbus or, or all these different aircraft, you think, oh yeah, they, they do it like this. But in the Antonov, it's done a bit different. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just different. And then you start to learn. You go, oh, that's that's interesting. Okay, that does make sense. And here you go, you can start to, you hear the hydraulic pump kick on, and now the whole aircraft is starting to tilt forwards with the main gear coming down at the front. And you can sort of start to see it happening like that now. And then the ramp will come down shortly. So it, like they were saying that you're four stories up when you're taxiing this aircraft, but when you're inside the cockpit here, you're actually enclosed completely by the nose, which is mm. kind of interesting. <laughs> Uh, we're expecting this to sort of stop shortly and then the ramp should start to come down. But there are there are plenty. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, someone was asking about the sound. It has some awesome sound, but you just can't hear it in today's presentation. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> the the, the yeah. sounds we, we've taken them a lot from real references as well. So you can the, there's doors sounds, there's hydraulic pump sounds, there's mm. uh, ones for the APUs. Everything is in there and mm. it's all, uh, you know, a really nice, authentic recording as well. Awesome. So now you can see the ramp going up and we can quickly hop back into the cockpit if I do that now and just move my camera back down again. So I'll quickly choose a payload. So let's, for example, take uh, let's take the train. 
And if we now pop onto the outside view, you can actually see it's, uh, if I load the cargo now, sorry, on the fire trucks. Oh, I think I may have done something slightly wrong here. Sorry about that. Uh, let me just choose the Good. payloads, uh, load this up here. Fine. I'm seeing a couple of great questions. We'll answer those as soon as. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead and ask the questions out. I'll go, I'll <laughs> go through those. Yeah. Um, someone's wondering, just like how there was an enhanced edition for the A310, if there would be an enhanced edition for the AN225. From from what I understand, no, it's going to be just a single package, mm -hmm. which is what you see here. So this yeah. is what we'll be offering across every platform. Okay, nice. I think that's probably about it, really. I can try and set this to a bit of a nighttime, and uh, we yeah. will... We will just show you some of the cockpit ambience we have here, which is which is really, really great. Because it's such a, a large working space, you can kind of have a lamp here. And I absolutely love putting up the uh, the desk lamp here. And you can just sit there, look back, and <laughs> it's like a mobile office. It's great. <laughs> this is phenomenal. Cameron, thank you so much for this no tour. Worries. And a really incredible job by you and the i9 Builds team. Well, um, before, you, before you take off, Cameron, yeah. do you yes. want to tell the story about you meeting John Absolutely. Yes, we were we were able to go down and meet uh, Dimitri, um, and we were able to show the we were able to show them the aircraft as well. So we were able to get feedback from from what they thought, what what you know, seeing the aircraft, and they really like the aircraft because it's one of those things where to see it again in the sim is is uh, you know something else as well. And it's always great to be able to get feedback from the people. There's the only a handful of people that have flown this in real life, and we were able to meet them, get interactions mm -hmm. with them, and get feedback from them directly, which was. I mean, as you said before, you're, he's a legend. And meeting a legend is always a great day. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And then do the fans work? The fans, they that's a great question. Uh, and they do. So let's let's have a look. Uh, and there, it's got a very satisfying animation, if I might add. So the fan control is up here. So this is the fan on the captain's side. And I'll just make it a bit brighter so we can actually see it kind of kick on a little bit better. There we go. So the fans do work, Aww. and you can turn them around. So and cool. as a <laughs> great addition. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. Well, super. Thank you so much. Thank um, you very much, both of you, um, Antonov, for helping. It's been great, and it's you know we're we're getting close. So so there are a couple of.